You're listening to Ask When, the podcast. Folks from all walks of life talk about their daily hustle and bustle, living and celebrating life, sharing tips on becoming champions, especially for those who are muscling, mental, and physical disabilities. Ask When, the podcast with your host, who has mustered over 30 years living with cerebral palsy and going strong, author and cerebral palsy advocate, Wynn Charles. Ask when the podcast starts right now. Welcome to Ask When, everyone. Today with me, I have Kyle. And so I'm going to Kyle take it away and explain more about what he does. Thanks for having me, Wynn. I appreciate it very much. Um, I'm a Canadian-born golf professional. Uh, I have cerebral palsy as well. Um, I've uh, been a golf professional since 2008. Um, I've done a lot of teaching golf in my career, um, and traveling and playing. Um, I now own a golf brand and company. We do have an academy teaching golf lessons year round, as well as doing brand ambassadorship and speaking engagements. So, okay, are you talking about when you say professional golf? Are you talking about the PGA Tour here? Yeah, in uh, 2017, I, you know, I broke out and was able to. Uh, gain a spot into one of their events which actually set history being the first golfer of cerebral palsy to play in a pga tour sanctioned event how cool is that how cool is that um so what has been your biggest achievement geez with all this Mm. yeah you know I think when I look back on a few things, there's, there's a few things that I've accomplished that I never would have, I would have thought were, were maybe cap, you know, able to happen in my life. Um, I, I think a big thing is, uh, trying to have some leadership for people with these disabilities and, uh, set an example so they can have a leverage point and something to believe on and, um, I think that's that's really big with what I needed as a kid. There wasn't too much of that. Um, and I think that's a big thing that revolves around everything I do with teaching golf or, or my business. And if you don't mind me asking, number one, what is your cerebral palsy? Yeah, so it's in my my left my left arm and hand and leg. Okay, so yours is mild compared to mine. Mine is all over my body, and um, people know it too. And I need twenty-four hour care, and so yours would be considered mild or moderate. Yeah, I think uh, I. If you see me now, it's very easy to think it was a pretty mild case i i think i'm 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 very grateful for the shriners hospital and the corrective surgeries i was able to have um i you know mild to moderate i think uh you know when i was a kid i my uh my situation was pretty dire i was very blessed to get the right help at the right time um and and i i do know that other people with cerebral palsy or other disabilities, sometimes that timing just doesn't come across the table for them. You and I have been both both very blessed to get the right amount of help at the right time. And um, now it it is scarier. It's scarier now now that we sit in these times of an unknown virus and an unknown economic epidemic and all that good stuff my biggest fear is that um not only will there be a baby boom but my biggest fear is that we'll bring kids 
into the next generation behind us with CP and worse CP um, than we had, be, than we have because of what's going on in the world right now. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Uh, it's, it's very, uh, I mean, it's, it's luck of the draw with it is, you know, I mean, uh, I think there's a responsibility that's put on parents when you have a child with a disability that you don't really expect. Um, maybe that, you know, that's part of the reason why I've held off on children in my life, uh, you know, to this point too, to make sure that the right, the right pieces are in place because I do understand the requirements. And I've decided, um, and you guys know this, my fan base who sticks around with me for a super long time, I have decided, number one, I'm gay. Number two, I can't have kids. My body can't handle kids. And no, no, no way. No way, no how. And so, uh, yeah, but I wanted to ask you this, if you had to move and only take five things with you, what would they be? Um, probably, uh, you know, my phone and four books. Your you know. phone and four books. Jeez, I thought you would... I thought you would say I would take my golf clubs. No. No, I think, uh, I, I do think, you know, in my life at this point, golf is uh, not not that it's a back burner, but th there's other things to, to life along with golf. Um, I think that's, you know, something that I've come to learn too. And so if your best friend had to write a book about you, what would um, the title be? Yeah, you know, I, I have a book that's going to be coming. Um, I don't want to say the title right now. Um, I, 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 maybe like The Unknown, that would probably be what everybody else would view my life as when I was a kid with a disability with the disability um because there was a lot of unknown with what was going to happen so your yeah, book title wouldn't be the unknown and so when were you diagnosed with cerebral palsy because the stats that i'm now reading and i don't read them very often you guys um say that kids who are in preschool now are getting diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Yeah, I think that's probably something that's not really talked about or understood a lot with uh, this condition is, uh, you know, mine was at birth. So um, e even then they didn't really, uh, weren't able to really pinpoint things with what it was um, until I, you know, had to start trying to move around. But it is very common, forgive that, um, it is very common for kids to get diagnosed later. And I think that's something why it's so important as kids are growing up at a young age to be cognitive of uh, paying attention to what's going on. Yeah, I agree. I was um, actually diagnosed. I was blessed enough to be diagnosed. Uh, the day after my birth and then got a traumatic brain injury on top of cerebral palsy. So that's um, my story and I'm sticking to it. But um, I agree with you that it's such a misnomer disability that doctors really don't know what's going on until the um, kids start missing their milestones. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, that's probably, you know, the biggest thing. I remember when I was, you know, about seven years old, I had, I've had a couple corrective surgeries in Canada here, and the doctors were kind of uh, on a, res had resided in my, my future. 
of not being very, very bright. And I remember that very early on being very surprised how early a group of doctors would be willing to submit their final submission on what somebody's going to achieve in their life. And I think, uh, you know, that's, that's a big thing that's probably scary for a lot of kids when you have a disability and you're going through hospital systems, you have an unknown and then maybe you have the wrong doctor to that thinks a certain thing just because they have a medical degree, um, which yeah. really isn't necessarily much of the case. You know, they're necessarily correct all of the time. A lot of technicalities that kind of come into play. Yeah, exactly. So, um, what is your favorite book and what is the title? Seller Be Sold by Grant Cardone. Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone. Now, you guys, if you're listening to this in the next couple of weeks, um, I know that Audible is giving a discount. I know that Amazon's giving a discount. And I um, know that Libby and Overdrive are two library systems that the libraries are using. And um, go get Sell or Be Sold, be my guest get sell or be sold and um, enjoy you guys because we're all stuck in quarantine. And so, Kyle, what is your morning routine? Well, a lot of the time I get up pretty early. Um, you know, when gyms are open, I uh, frequently would work out. But uh, it's been a little bit more of uh, getting up and doing a lot of reading. Um, and a lot of training and a lot of back end stuff for the business. I think this uh, pandemic uh, gives a lot of opportunity to take care of a few things um, business wise that we all needed to. Um, you know, I, I see it as a big opportunity rather than a downfall. I think this is a time, um, if it's taken correctly, it can definitely, uh, you can move forward and, and, uh, reach a different marketplace that you didn't have access to before all this hit. And so as we wrap this interview up, do you have any questions for me? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I, I think one of the biggest things that I would admire with you is your consistency and, and the content you're providing and, one of the biggest questions I know that uh, I have is how did you develop the team around you to make all of the ha that happen? Um, whether it be with, you know, the podcast or maybe you had some support with getting your books out. Uh, who, how did you choose those people? Well, I had, um, I had support. Um, I always have support with getting my books out. I hire graphic designers, I hire editors because I can't edit to save my life. And then and then I have a team around me who um supports with some podcasts. One of them happens to be my best friend, Daniel Culver, who also has C P and so um I um I put her in the position four years ago of doing this and helping me out with my with my schedule back end. So all I would have to do is hop on mic and then I would have to um, do the interview and then I send, send it out or she send this out. I don't even send it out. I um, send it to an editor and the editor does his magic and so I've always needed help I'm always accepting that I need help and that's the way we all yes no I agree I think uh you know I think it's 
it's hard sometimes too to to pick the right people and uh and and build trust in some of them around you know some of those around you um and you know it sounds like you kind of have a tight-knit group uh as i would as well and so where can people find you and where can people get a hold of you yeah so i mean uh um we can check us out on kyle miller golf inc on linkedin um on a true potential golf on a youtube channel that we're launching shortly um and uh yeah kyle miller golf inc.com is our website i'll make sure that you have uh you know a link to that if you ever need as well and you guys will have all of Kyle's information in the show notes. And um, we'll just see how it goes. And Kyle, what would be your closing thoughts for this interview? Yeah, you know, I think uh, I think times like these uh, show all of us our weaknesses just like uh, those with disabilities. So I think, you know, it's a good, uh, good example of uh, no matter whether you're of an able state or, you know, of have have any condition that at some point, uh, everybody has to work on their weaknesses. Um, And uh, whether that be in life or with a disability, or as we all are going kind of through uh, an epidemic, all of us are are opening up to all of that and uh that's the biggest thing is uh resilience is the biggest uh attribute in gaining success and i think that's uh what you want to work at work at your weakness with a lot of resilience i agree i agree and we're um trying not to talk about weaknesses in um this because i don't know if you know this but in the united states kyle you and i made it to a list that i will i never want to be put on again to you guys the um cdc list we made it to the cdc list i never want to be put on that CDC, (laughs) cdc list again because um cerebral palsy is a neurological disability and it's caused by lack of oxygen, you guys know that I share my story all the time. And so um, when I flew home from a business trip and I knew what was going on, I have the wherewithal to know what's going on, but it was pretty shocking when I found out that the CDC put this list together and our disability was on that list, and yikes, I wasn't too happy. I wasn't too happy. I was already in self-quarantine. I was already quarantined, but just to know that the CDC did that to all of us, and they did it out of precautionary measures. So please, 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 you guys, Do the social distancing thing so that you don't take the disabled down with you. And if I sound exhausted, that's because I am. And so please, please, please do the social distancing thing. And wear gloves to the grocery store. And if the state, if the state you reside in um, requires a mask and gloves, do that. Because I don't want to be in the hospital, nor does Kyle. And so the CDC and the World Health Organization is trying, and I'm also exhausted because I am um, trying to do homework, but that's another story in itself. And so, but please, you guys, just mind the social distancing thing. I know there's a lot of people who are not minding it. And please, you guys, I beg of you, just 
mind the social distancing thing if you need to go get food or you need to go get exercise just well in Paris in Paris they said no more exercise in Paris France they said no more exercise because of um the social distancing thing so hello so please mind the social distancing and i know it's tough on you guys it's tough on me too but please mind the social distancing thing and kyle do you have anything else to say yeah no i agree with you i think uh, it's important we all take the proper measures at this you know during these times and uh the more we all come together the the sooner and more thorough we'll come through it as a as a whole, I think the more scattered and inconsistent is, the harder it gets. Well, I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. And Kyle, I thank you so much for your time today. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And I I really hope you reach out to Kyle and support Kyle and support those business owners like myself with um, disabilities because running a business, having a disability is a challenge and a half, but we'll make it, you guys. So let's keep this world a safer, happier place. You guys, thanks to you guys. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, if any of you are looking for any training courses, check out Grant Cardone's website to uh, take advantage of these times and Thank you so much for having me, Win. Thank you. You just listened to Ask Win, the podcast. To become a guest in the show, visit our website at askwin.weebly.com or call 816-591-3399. Just look for Danielle. Connect with Win on Twitter at Win Kelly Charles and like our Facebook page at Butterflies of Wisdom. You can also purchase Win's book through Amazon.com or get a copy of the audiobook through Audible. Ask when the podcast.